So good morning and thank you for joining this session and welcome to Uptime 2021. Uh, my name is Raf Poltronieri. I'm a cloud solution architect working for an Italian cloud service provider. I'm in tech since 1998 and focusing into virtual environment uh, since uh, 2006. <clears throat> I got several certifications, including VMware, AWS, and uh, I'm VMware uh, expert for six years in a row. Um, today, I would like to expose you my point of view about uh, data protection. When should we use backup? When disaster recovery? Um, when business continuity? And also, what if we mix them? Maybe the best solution is not just one of them but a mix according to the purposes and needs coming from that, uh, that data. Oh, um, in this session, I, that sh <coughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, I will focus on some points related to the data protection that often are called with the same name and get mixed up. All of them important at the same level, but everyone with its own scope. Uh, some boundaries are, of course, in common, but the main scope is different. Every organization of every size, also every individual, has data to protect from important corporate documents to family pictures. Uh, since the main values to define a protection are RPO and RTO, let's have a look at this, these uh, variables. Uh, RPO, its recovery point objective, is the time between last replication, last successful replication of data, and a disaster. In other words, it's an estimation of the max amount of the data that can be lost. <clears throat> so the lower value, the better is. Uh, RTO, recovery time objective, is that measures the time needed to be back operative. Um, so in, uh, again, um, like before, the time between disaster and complete recover, uh, like before, the lower is better. So um, I'm just managing the, this platform is new for me, <laughs> okay. Um, so usually, but not necessarily, these two values are uncoupled. Uh, the second always larger the first one uh, than the first one. Uh, seems that, uh, well, the larger because uh, after you recover uh, your data, uh, you need a little bit of time to check that the connections are okay, that IPs are okay, that everything will work uh, again. You can plan it before, but it will take some little amount of, of, uh, of time. So usually it's a little bit, little bit um, uh, larger. Uh, so from this graphic, it's a very simple graphic. Uh, well, mm, seems that business continuity is the best choice, isn't it? Well, rem remember this graphic, we'll come back later. Um, so there are three main levels of protection, plus many others in, in the middle, but let's focus on these three ones. Uh, the first one is the legacy backup. It keeps the records for long periods at prefixed intervals, usually with a three to one policy. Uh, it means three copies at least two places or two medias, uh, one of them offline. Well, it, it is a time consuming process. Uh, it needs space, but it can be compressed and stored in non-performance storage, although durable and reliable. Uh, retention policies can be discussed and decided based on uh, kind of data, uh, but values of RTO or RPO in any case are usually large and usually takes a full backup every total amount of day, days <clears throat> for every data asset. And uh, it will after proceed with incremental backups according to the previously set policies. Uh, these data are compressed, as told before, and sent to be the backup storage. Uh, according to retention policies, a rotation occurs so that the first backup is removed 
uh, when did the last come in is uh, if we follow our first in first out uh, logic. So to accomplish the uh, three two one rule, the backup files are also sent off-site and offline. Usually, uh, it is available a uh, file level restore, uh, but S4 restore, it can take much time. Storage is not performant. Data are compressed, and after the so-called rehydration, they must be copied to the production storage. Well, this is a long process, even if in case of a file level restore, although reduced due to uh, file indexing. So let's move to the second uh, solution. Uh, disaster recovery. This is a solution that can recover from a disaster intended as a loss of data caused by many events, uh, human error, weather, fire, virus. Uh, in this case, the data loss should be as low as possible. Uh, so low RPO as the uh, previous value <clears throat> and a quite fast recover to operativity. And uh, again, as before, um, low RTO value. Uh, at the same time, <clears throat> sorry, uh, at the same time, we have to uh, think it in a, in a um, kind of um, to, uh, keeping a certain amount of, of recovery points. Uh, so uh, disaster recovery is uh, very valuable for, for these uh, recovery points we, where we can rewind uh, in case of the recovery doesn't work as expected. An example could be a inconsistency of a database. So the storage type in this case should be a production class, not a low performance like the previous one, because it will be the, the same storage that will be used um, in the new production site. Uh, since in this case, RPO is not equal to zero, you need near two, uh, replication is called asynchronous. How much? It depends on the solution. Hopefully, we will talk on minutes, if not seconds, but definitely not hours. Uh, consequentially, the time to recover will be acceptable. Uh, following the previous graphic uh, in minutes or maybe hours, but not days. So in this case, uh, a system monitors the activity of data building, catching almost immediately any modification and at regular intervals, these modifications are reported to the recovery site. These intervals define the RPO. In this way, the recovery site is always updated and ready to switch in if needed by any disaster. Uh, the same systems that monitors also keep track of the reported modification. Doing so, it sets recovery points prior, prior to, to the last one. Uh, now, the next solution it is uh, the, the business continuity. The solution assures that operativity is not affected by any fault or disaster. Usually, it implies a second site running in shadow with the first one in real sync. So should the first one, uh, so uh, the first site fail, uh, immediately the second one is ready to be used. So in this case, RTO, it will be equal to zero and also RPO equal to zero. But there are a few of downside points. First of all, it is expensive. You have costs doubled for resources that are usually unused, but it can be acceptable if data are critical, of course. Uh, the second point is that, did you notice the zero beside RTO and RPO? Well, th this is amazing. But since it is in real sync, you cannot, as the previous solution, rewind to a previous point if anything should not work as uh, expected. So just think, what if a ransomware infected your primary site? Real sync it, uh, also the secondary site will be affected. So seems that no one of the previous uh, solution is acceptable or because of cost or time or recovery points. But hey, why don't we use more than one? Well, we, uh, if we usually perform a backup, and we should, by the way, 
and uh, well this is not odd <laughs> so um sorry again i'm losing sorry for for this platform but okay and uh, we as told before <laughs> we should uh, uh, test our uh, restores and number two uh, we should, should test uh, well nothing prevents us to have uh, to set up a, a disaster recovery solution beside this uh, backup so this is the first MOOC the, this is um, recipe but in this book of recipes our there are strict rules we should always consider a backup no matter which business you run don't we back up our summer videos? Uh, should we do the same with the company accounting books, right? So backup stay at the basis. Uh, this done, we could focus on what is critical, when and where we can afford a certain amount of data loss, when we should absolutely be reactive in uh, terms of uh, operativity. So uh, we come to the second recipe. <clears throat> Uh, so in this case, we have a mix of backup and disaster recovery, where the backup keeps the long retention data, but in case of disaster, uh, they are quickly recovered in, in a new environment with almost no loss. And uh, well, there is another recipe that mm, we have a mix. We could have a, a mix of backup and business continuity with no disaster recovery in the middle. Well, it's possible, but it's a little weird. Um, I have historical data thanks to backup, okay. I have full operability because of business continuity, okay. But in my logical re uh, reasoning, there's a hole. I miss the possibility to step back in my sync data uh, shouldn't be that satisfying and without recurring to backup. So um, by the way, business continuity is not cheap. So why don't check them all with the last use case? So. In this case, um, backing up data for long retention, recording changes during a short period to allow recovery after the disaster to be re recovered to a previous time. And finally, sleeping in a vault, a coupled side active standby or also active active where to switch in in case of physical fault of the production site, uh, backed by a disaster recovery system that uh, will save my data for the last hours in, in case of any other disaster. And finally, a robust backup keeping safe uh, data of days, weeks, months, and also years ago. Um, again, I will not get tired. Uh, in all cases, in, for any of the three solutions, it's mandatory to perform regular restore and failover tests. You don't want to discover that the system didn't save your complete data or the thing was referring a wrong path exactly during a disaster, isn't it? And I'm not talking about corruption of data. This is uh, a use case, yes, but this is the, the, the most think uh, use case. Um, so, uh, I, I would like to do now a disclaimer. I'm not referring a disaster recovery plan and uh, neither to a business continuity plan. So the first part of uh, is, is, well, the, the first is part of the second and also backup is far part of business continuity plan. But in this session, I only uh, refer to technical solution, not procedures that also will be reported in that procedures. Um, now, um, business continuity plan is a wider plan where disaster recovery and backup are taken into account for the IT part, but the uh, continuity should consider many other components of, uh, out of the IT perimeter that could cause an interruption of, of, the, of the business. Um, it's a tactic coordination, strategic procedures, and operational or emergency team document. Uh, so please, let's consider <clears throat> the first part of the session, business continuity, only related to IT, 
and not also to all the other components. In this way, we will talk of IT operativity with no interruption, also RTO and RPO uh, equal to zero, and so on with all the previous slides. Starting by now, I would like to introduce a more methodical discussion between uh, DR and uh, BC based on, on the data displayed in the, this pyramid, courtesy of Tech Target, and in particular, having a look at the main differences. Business continuity is more uh, proactive, refers to processes and procedures to implement to ensure that mission critical functions can continue during and after a disaster. Uh, the focus of the business continuity is a long-term challenge. Disaster recovery is more reactive, defines steps to take to resume operation uh, following an incident. Uh, disaster recovery actions take place after the incident and response times can range from seconds to hours to days in case of backup. Uh, business continuity as the organization has its focus, disaster recovery looks at technology infrastructure. Business continuity includes the disaster recovery tech element, but have also many other elements to uh, stay afloat. Uh, so they both consider various unplanned events for from cyber attacks to human error to natural disaster. They also have the goal of getting the business running as close as uh, normal as possible, especially concerning mission critical applications. Uh, in many cases, the same team is involved with, with both business continuity and uh, necessary recovery, the emergency team. Uh, usually, these plans are uh, following the same, the, the, the next, the, these steps. Uh, so the first is the risk identification. Uh, the second one is the business impact analysis, the so-called BIA. Then design and implementation of the plan. And last but not the least, testing. So the more accurate are these points, the more effective they are, the more expensive they are, of course. So organizations should strike a balance between the level of investment in uh, BCDR. Um, the, um, anticipated financial effects all of a given disaster scenario. So you don't want to come up with a solution uh, that costs 200 more than uh, disaster would have. Oh, in these uh, uh, scenarios, service providers play a bigger BCDR role. A large percentage of MSPs are involved in backup and disaster recovery. Uh, the MSP sector is likely uh, to emerge as one-stop shop for business continuity services, particularly for uh, small and uh, medium business that are lacking internal expertise. And uh, MSP in their trusted advisor role can advise clients on PCDR planning or make technology recommendations. Some providers, their own, um, some of them provide their, their own disaster recovery as a service while other partner with vendors that provide that tool. Um, well, uh, I missed the, the chat, so just looking at some uh, question. I was quite fast in my explanation. I hope it was like, good. Well, I don't see questions, so maybe it means that I was <laughs> quite clear, or other than maybe all too fast or, or clear. So, uh, is anybody uh, come on, on stage? Otherwise, um, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Andrew. <laughs> uh, Well, uh, in any case, you can, uh, should you have any other question after this session, you can contact me uh, by Twitter. Uh, you can see, um, no, you cannot see still. Sorry, but my contact is okay. Uh, on uh, the bottom, bottom uh, the left, you can find my hashtag for Twitter. It would be uh, at Rafa Paul. 
or you can visit if you like my uh, my blog at uh, beardixit.wordpress.com so uh well i would like to if no other questions are on i would like to thank you for your time spent with me in this minutes uh hoping that it could be useful and uh, i would like also to thank especially to thank Greencast for hosting me in this amazing event so uh please continue following this event we have many other sessions uh, during the day and uh, well thank you again <laughs>